Hello, friends. Lee Brown here. Welcome to Crazy Shit in Real Estate. Today, I've got Carl Kraushoff. Krauskopf. Look, I can't hardly say his name. I don't speak German, but Carl Krauskopf is with us, and he's really smart. His company is Aurora, so it's easier to say than his name. Super great insights and information. So put your nerd hat on, but hang in there because there is a wild story after the nerd talk. You're going to really be improved and cautious and what after this episode. So enjoy the conversation. I'll see you on the other side. I have to practice my German. It's been a long time since I've been to Germany. Ah, uh, sprechen Sie Deutsch? Um, um, no, uh, no, I used to say even nine. Nine. There you go. Um, ein, ein, zwei, drei. Say, say it again. Ein, zwei, drei. <laughs> Actually, I can I can sing in German. I've got German diction from my my vocal days, but sure. no idea what I'm singing. Nice, that's awesome. How are you? <laughs> I'm fantastic. I hope you are. I am. I am. Uh, it's a, a fantastic morning over here in Seattle. What you got? I see some bright lights behind you. Is it sunny? Is this one of your five sunny days in Seattle? You know, I don't think it is actually sunny outside. Oh. I think it's it may be partially sunny. Yesterday was. So uncanny. It was uh, 70 degrees. Oh, it was the weirdest thing. Uh, sunny. Uh, and the day before was in like the 40s. Today's back in the 40s. Oh. So I don't know what the hell is going on. I don't know. But if that 70 degree day, if somebody was smart, they would sponsor all the digital billboards and say today's weather sponsored by Florida. And they would put like their real estate website on it. <laughs> And then you would be ready to go. Oh, absolutely. That, that's probably going to happen at some point. And do you, you probably have those blip billboards out there. We have them here. You ever seen blip? Like you can buy um, limited digital space on sure. billboards and it runs periodically. You know, the mm -hmm. one thing that I really like about, C well, there's many things I like about Seattle. One thing in particular is there's no billboards. There are no billboards for oh. like the entire stretch of Seattle, Everett, Tacoma, and it's fantastic. Yeah, because you have it. views there, I guess. You don't want to disrupt the natural views? I guess so. I don't know what the hell it is. I mean, there's there's not a lot of space um, on the side of highways. So um, I think that's one thing. Uh, but I was just in Boise uh, two, like it. two weeks ago, and it's, it's Billboard Central. Utah was as well. And... Uh, coming back here where there's no billboards. I mean, it's nice. You're like, Hey, we get this right. Go us. <laughs> yeah. That's one thing. Yep. I mean, <laughs> you know, we all get certain things right and certain things we could probably do better. That's everywhere. Right. right. Just depends on who's running the narrative machine. Right. Yeah. I mean, the narrative out here is insane. I'm sure you've probably heard the crazy, the crazies and crazies on crazies. Yeah. It kind of worries me a little bit about my regular friends who live out there and yep. they're they have trouble navigating sometimes, but they yep. also say there's so many perks to living there that it's worth navigating some of the craziness. So, you know, I, I, I genuinely have hope. So I grew up in Florida. I lived in Dallas for a, a, a long while. So uh, politics aside, I'm, I'm conservative at heart. And, uh, you know, one thing that uh, brought me hope was in our last general election for the city, city of Seattle, we had a post or maybe a, 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 a they used to be conservative mayor and a republic a ex republican a general uh, attorney mm -hmm. um, somehow won the election and now uh, we've got like some a glimmer of hope coming back of like they want to double the police force they want to clean the streets they want to actually hold uh, you know violent crimes accountable so uh, that benefits it, the whole community. It does. It does. It, I mean, it, it absolutely the does. And the fringe things, but when you have the Chaz zone, yep. that that doesn't fit anybody's idea of where we need to be as a functioning society. Right. But it also doesn't mean everybody has to be all the way on the other side of the political spectrum. There's this beautiful place in the middle where middle. most hang out. Yep. Totally agree. Right. So how did you land in Seattle after Florida and Dallas? What took you there? Uh, so work moved my wife and I out to Dallas and we spent about four years there. First year was pretty cool. Uh, then we realized this is a concrete jungle. Don't really like it. We like to go outside, uh, snowboard, hike. 
So we spent all of our disposable in Dallas. Say it again. You're not snowboarding in Dallas. Nah, not too much. It was a pretty difficult. We tried once and we got injured. We spent all of our disposable income leaving the state, leaving the city. uh, And we realized, hey, why not just actually live where we want to live? So, uh, you know, we we toyed around with Denver, with Seattle, and we landed on Seattle because of the proximity to the ocean. It just felt like the right place, kind of, Mm -hmm. again, growing up in the on the ocean, on the beaches in Florida. And uh, we've been out here five years now. So absolutely love it. Love the mountains, love the snowboarding. Snowboarding is pretty garbage out here compared to like Denver, but the hiking is it's top notch. I mean, we're, we're an hour away from some of the best trails in the country. And you don't have all the ratchet humidity that we have here that would take all the fun away from those hikes. So and remind me where you live. I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. Nice. So we've got the beach three hours away, the mountains two hours away, and we can yep. do any activities we want, but the humidity makes the outdoors kind of miserable here in the next two months. Yeah. hundred percent. Right now though, it's great. So yep. we're going to the mountains in two weeks to do some hiking ourselves. Cause nice. that's our break time. Have fun. Is that Asheville or what? Actually, Asheville is too, too much of a city for me now. Sure. So we go to the little tiny mountain towns. We like to go find Airbnbs and then we'll nice. go whitewater raft, banner elk and blow and rock are small enough to sure. still have a good town feel like Boone is big college yep. town. Asheville is a big city with cool yep. stuff in it, but like Waynesville, Waynesville is the jam. I'm familiar with Waynesville. So stinking cute there. Yeah. They got everything. I like it. But because I'm that mom, I'm going to drive to Flat Rock too. So my kids can go to Carl Sandburg's house. Have you ever been there? No, I haven't. We, my, my grand, my grandparents owned homes in uh, Asheville. So we went there every summer. Do you remember who Carl Sandburg was? I don't. So you, you'll remember it in a second. It's in your head. It's in the back of your elementary school history. He was the national poet laureate for the country. Okay. In the sixties. Sure. And when he died, he left his house to the United States. Interesting. And so on the day he died, they froze the house. So when you go in there, the newspaper that he was reading is still beside his chair. The nice. little glass of water he was drinking out of is still sitting there. And of course they've roped it off, but it's creepy and cool at the same time. Sure. But a great conversation to have with your kids. You know, yeah. you gotta be the nerd parent who drags them through historic things so that one day they can do it to their kids too. Oh, absolutely. Everything works. So tell me what you do in and around real estate sure. and how you landed in that space. So right now we are uh, fo- primarily focused on developments, developments and apartment holds. So we are doing uh, some uh, townhomes. We've got about 11, 12 units in under, under construction right now, actually five units under construction, six are being sold and uh, five of six are already under contract. We're just, just listed the last one today hoping to get those all sold out. So we ended up syndicating that from uh, uh, 506B, some family and friends. And uh, we are at, I think, month 14, month 13, somewhere around there. And uh, we're looking forward to getting those liquidated and return back over to uh, some of our investors and uh, rolling into the next project, which again, hopefully is going to be getting into some of these uh, larger mid-sized, I would call them mid-sized apartments here in the Puget Sound and other a uh, few other markets over the in the southeast. Okay, so with building right now, obviously it's one of the most challenging spaces to be in because there's no way to put controls on labor or materials. Right. Are you selling them cost plus? How are you managing that so that you can still feed the profitability of the syndicate? So it, it what's interesting is that in this last year we the appreciation on the, on the actual uh, exit value has kept up and has exceeded the cost of the construction. Okay. So uh, for instance on this one that we're just liquidating right, right now uh, yeah we I want to say we're over budget by like 250 250,000 dollars which is terrible absolutely hate it. Unit or across the 11? Whole, uh, across the across the six, across the six. Oh, yeah, no, 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 not for a unit. That'd be awful. <laughs> uh, across the six. And, uh, you know, a lot of that was due to we had to go underground, things that weren't actually like lumber related or fixture related. It was just the utility company made us do something absolutely different according to plan, right? We were supposed to go overhead. They wanted us to go underground. Huge cost. But, right, we increased budget by 250. Now we are the last one, depending on where the last one sells, will be between, um, you know, 
500 to 520, uh, 525,000 over our original underwriting. Yeah. So there's, there's meat there. So it, yes, it was somewhat of a risky play, but even nonetheless, even if we were under over budget, didn't have the full appreciation there, you know, we still had enough meat in the bone. We protect our investors to a certain degree with preferred returns. So they are still making some money on their money, some return on their capital, even if, you know, we're, our profit pool isn't, isn't as expected. So obviously, you know, we've got targets that we want to hit and uh, managing the budget is, is, is uh, tough as, as tough as possible, right? Just making sure that we're buying the right fixture to the right product uh, end product that we want. So are you, are you mainly focused on the next play as raw land to develop land, or do you want to go all the way from raw to finished housing projects? So on the development side, we are actually, what's interesting is we're, we're primarily focused on picking up permitted sites because of the speed and how long it takes, especially here in Seattle, right? It'll take minimum 12 months for a townhome project. Apartments are usually two to three years to get the permits. And so we're actually, we're just focused right now on buying the permitted sites, right? We're ending, sure, we'll end up leaving some capital on the table because we're having to pay uh, the person who went in and got the entitlements. But from a speed, from a velocity of money, uh, we're, we're not, you know, we're not land banking the first out of the deal. So we're just going in and we're mobilizing capital. Uh, we've got builders from the north to the south end of the, of the, uh, uh, of the MSA, uh, and uh, we just get rocking and rolling on it. So you don't want to buy a parcel in North Carolina because one of my buddies just sent me one today that's 73 permitted home sites with nice. utility, walking distance to a college and the guy did all the development and he's not going to build the houses now. So interesting. No, we, we might want that. I mean, yeah, yeah. So we, we ended up, we started looking a lot in, uh, at the development in other MSAs. Our first bout was in Phoenix, looking at the Phoenix market for developments, for um, apartments, et cetera. And after about a dozen uh, different, you know, hyper due diligence properties, we realized that we're just, we're not playing in the right market right now. There's too much into institutional money going in and banking on, uh, you know, years 15 to 25, making the cake. And, uh, you know, just to be totally frank, we're not in that position yet. So, we're we're still be said for staying in your backyard where you know all the players. Yeah. You do have people in different specialty parts of the MSA and you know the the hiccups you might run into from utilities, so you can right. factor that in now. It's right. it's huge and yeah. not, a, not a small thing to consider. And so uh, you know, we are buying, we are looking at apartments in the southeast already performing uh, ideally underperforming uh, assets in the southeast Atlanta and about three or four in uh, Florida. And the idea there is to break into the market via an already operating asset, gain the relationships, make the relationships, understand the you know the, the whole building process, and then going going into a development cycle. So obviously that's going to take uh, quite a bit longer. And uh, you know I I, I'm, I'm, I suffer from a shiny uh, what is it shiny object syndrome. Shiny object syndrome. There you yeah. go. And so when you when you told me the seventy four unit, I was like shit. Like let's get it. Let's do it. Hey. I know I saw the email this morning. I'm like, yep. who can I call? Because yeah. and then I'm like, wait a minute, I'm not a builder. I need to, I need to yep. slow my call here yep. because it's not my specialty. It should be. And that's where the money is. But yeah. my risk return ratio is a lot lower than a lot of people's. Yeah, it's certainly where the money is, especially you know, what we're looking at right now, uh, going to any other de developments is exit strategy number one is buy, uh, but build to rent, build to sell. It has to work, right? Just in case things go south from the rental standpoint for whatever reason. But our primary target right now is build a rent. So obviously the premise of the show is the crazy shit in real estate. And we're going to sit here in this nerd hole for too long. And then the listeners will be like, this is way too nerdy for me. They want to hear a story. So sure. Carl, dying to know in the moves that you've made and in what you've done in real estate and in building a family syndicate, which for those of y'all that don't know, that means people put all their money in together to buy a piece of beer, to buy a pack of beer, and then everybody gets some of the beer. That's what syndication <laughs> is. And it's not as complicated as people make it out to be, but it does mean that you're also inheriting the risk that right. your family members are buying the wrong kind of beer. It just happens, right? So knowing all of that and the angles you've been in, 
What kind of story you got for the audience today? This episode is sponsored by Follow Up Boss, one of the leading CRMs, client relationship managers for residential real estate, tons of top producing agents, and some of the fastest growing teams out there are using Follow Up Boss to increase lead conversion, eliminate busy work that you're not doing anyway, and frankly, deliver a higher class experience in real estate to everybody who chooses you as their realtor of choice. Follow Up Boss is going to take the names and phone numbers and also help you know what to do next so you can maintain these relationships with your neighbors, because that's what this is about. Real estate is not about serving just prospects and clients. It's it's about taking great care of your neighbor's needs in real estate. Truly, it's going to change your business when you start paying better attention to people. They don't have to know you use Follow Up Boss, but they'll totally understand that they are being heard by you. And frankly, because you're my people and we made an ask for you, Follow Up Boss said, yes, you get double the free trial. That's actually enough time to log in, put some pieces in it, and watch it change your business as it has for so many realtors and teams nationwide. Again, go to followupboss.com slash crazy easy to start your free trial today. It is pretty rough. I mean, obviously, besides going over budget, two fifty, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000. Hey, but it's not as bad as I initially thought it was. I was about yeah. to die. Per unit, that, that'd be awful. Because that yeah. could happen in today's market. I'm just going to point that out. Yep. Yep. So I would say the most, the craziest story that I've got is when, so I originally started cutting my teeth and flipping homes. Uh, I, I was flipping homes for about two years during... Uh, still managing a full-time job, uh, you know, 40, 60 hour a day job. And I had a toddler at the same time, a, well, a newborn. So it was, a, it was a great time to start flipping homes, right? Why not? Why You're not, not sleeping anyway. Why not? So uh, I, I flipped my first home successfully, made like 60 grand. Uh, then I was, I was on cloud nine and decided to buy three more flips at the same time. Why not? Great idea. So two of them, they went okay, right? Probably made Fifteen thousand uh, dollars because of a, a general contractor who ended up stealing, walking away mid job. Fantastic. The third one was awful. The third one, uh, I started the, I closed on it in, I want to say, late September of 2018. Let's call it 2019. And uh, what ended up happening is it was a, it was borderline teardown. Uh, my general contractor, same one who stole money from the other projects started replacing the roof, started redoing windows, got red tagged. Red tagged means basically the city says you're doing work without permits. I said, oh, damn. Yeah, I thought you just told me that you, you pulled permits. This is not the bad part. This is the easy part. The bad part is uh, after about two weeks of maybe one week of having the red tag, so we stopped working, I get an email from an attorney in downtown Seattle saying, uh, Carl Krauskopf, you fraudulently purchased this home and the purchase and sale agreement is void. Our, the owners are demanding their home back. And I was like, this has got to be some, a whole, this has got to be totally false. I stood my ground wholeheartedly, got served at my home for, uh, about a week later. Yes, I was working from home at my day job, which of course, of course, you don't wear pants, right? When you're working from home. Who does? Who does? So I get served in a hoodie, no pants. Terrible. I spent about two months going through the process, which apparently is actually really short, which I was blessed from that perspective. But long story short is somebody actually did steal the identity of the uh, seller. Person from L Lubbock, Texas stole the identity of an 80-year-old man got a fake ID, set up an account in his name. Uh, we went through the whole title and escrow process, notary, everything. So title, uh, title and played there, paid out the uh, title insurance, which was good. I still, I still ended up losing uh, the amount of money that I put into replacing the roof, the siding, the windows, all that kind of stuff. Didn't get that back. So we were in the process of, uh, to make it, uh, all things even more complicated, we were in the process of uh, signing back over the quick claim deed, back over to the owner. And in the whole process, the owner died. Oh, no. Seriously? Yep. Unfortunately, the, the, the stress of this killed him. That guy in Texas should be <laughs> swung up. Yep, Absolutely. 
So this, this ended up taking uh, about another six months in, in probate court to uh, get the property back over to heirs of his that were nowhere to be found. It was a difficult process. No idea what happened to this gentleman uh, in Lubbock. I assume the attorney, the title attorneys went after him uh, he, as he ended up work, walking away through that process with about 280 grand. Surely they will track him down for that. Oh, of course. It was, it was shocking. You know, my, my very first conversation with the title attorneys was just follow the money. Like, go find out who opened that account, who went and cashed that check at XYZ Bank. And, just, and it ended up taking them about a month and a half to like, all right, we're going to follow the money. That's where the person is. And at that point, I was like, great idea, guys. Brilliant. You not watch CSI. I mean, come on. This is like the plot of every other episode. Yep. Yep. Okay. So let me ask you a question. You might not even know the answer to it. If you're listening to shows like on, on some talk radio channels, there's an ad for title lock where they talk about how you can protect your title from people coming in and taking the ID and the title and then refinancing and nobody sure. knows about it. Cause it's a whole separate name. Do you know about that? Is that related to this at all? No, I mean, I, I presume that it would be the same process of identity theft, right? You, I mean, you, you come up, you find out the social security, either, either you get access to their bank account. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm not I mean, an expert in it. Differently. Like how could you have protected yourself from th th there any way you would ever have known? Yeah. So, you know, my, uh, the entire like next three months of it, I was like, how, like, I've, I've got to come up with a way to, to make this as a success story. And so what is the lesson learned to me? It was tough because this was done via wholesale. So wholesale meaning okay. that, yeah, somebody got the contract from them come to find out that their entire relationship was digital, digitally based and never actually met the owner. So that was red, you know, going back, looking at it now, that's red flag number one. So I'm all, now I'm always hyper skeptical uh, about wholesales just because of that. And it's not that I don't, I've still bought, you know, several wholesale deals uh, since then. Uh, it's now just doing a little bit more vetting uh, of the owner themselves. Does it make sense? This was an, you know, 80 plus year old individual who was selling this home. Right. You know, if, if you're from a notary standpoint, or, you know, if you're, if you're actually working with the, the seller, does this person look 80 years old? <laughs> this, is, this is insane, but I guess it does provide for us all a good lesson for getting out from behind your computer and going yep. and meeting your, your other side of the transaction in person. And by the way, if you don't know a lot about wholesaling, actually my links are over here, follow the links to some of the episodes about wholesaling, where we have some people who can explain that a little bit better, but I mean, it's it's not necessarily an evil thing, but it's definitely this is a great cautionary tale. And my stomach hurts for you because the amount of time you invested in trying to fix it yep. threw you into the hole on other projects yep. and you weren't doing anything shady. And then you had your bad GC at the same time. So what happened to him? Did you send him to jail? Uh, I, I ended up yeah, I ended up getting a default judgment on him uh, for about 12 and a half or well, 12 grand plus a 12% interest annualized interest, which is great. So anytime he sells an asset at any point, maybe I can get some, but it's a hundred percent written off to bad debt. There's no way I'm going to expect $0 back, but you'll never use them again. And so there's that. <laughs> oh, of course. Yeah, that's correct. If I see him on the street, I'm coming for you. You're going to get your little cane out a little walking stick. That, it's a trek. It's a hiking pole. You could totally trip in with that. It's probably fiberglass too, so it won't even snap. Carbon fiber. Oh, that's what I meant. See, I don't know that stuff. I was trying to sound like I knew things, but thanks. Okay, so if somebody wants to reach out to you, Carl, they want to find out more about what you're doing with investors and syndication and development, and maybe just learn from what's happening in the Seattle market. What's the best way for people to find you? Uh, two ways. We've got a website, and we've got an, I've got an email. So auroraisinvestmentgroup.com. Aurora is like the Northern Lights. Yep. Beautiful. And uh, my name is Carl with a K, K-A-R-L uh, at auroraisinvestmentgroup.com. I've and also got some uh, Instagram handles as well. And all those, all of this, y'all, is in the show notes for this episode. 
I know you didn't write it down. Are you trying to remember now if he's a C or a K, Carl? Don't worry about it. There's a K, but look in the show notes to this episode, click and connect and go find out what Aurora's investments got going on that you can find out about. So thank you for coming on the show, Carl, and for giving us a little bit of insights into, well, your life and also a, a good cautionary tale for all of us to not do things that cause 80 year olds to die prematurely. There you go. That's pretty much what it boils down to. All right, friend. <laughs> exactly. If, if you learned something on this episode, or if you got a what face to leave for Carl, put it in the comments below, give him a like, give us a subscribe and a bell and make sure you come back for more crazy shit. And I'll see you next time. So if you found value in this episode, please like and subscribe to this channel, turn on the bell and catch another amazing episode by clicking above. Crazy Shit in Real Estate is also available on all of your normal podcast apps. So if that's where you like to hang out, go find me, click subscribe. And most importantly, leave me a review that says you think I'm awesome, my guests are awesome, or this content is just exactly what you were looking for. And then by the way, if there's something you need, you want to learn about something, you can comment below anytime. You can also send me a direct message if you need to remain anonymous. No judgment. But anyway, I'll only judge if you forget to subscribe and click. I'll see you next time.